In section 5.5, we are adding uh, what are called double angle identities. Um, once again, these are not ones that you will have to have memorized. You will have the same formula sheet that you have for the last quiz and test. Uh, you'll be able to use that on the next test as well. So my recommendation is to keep that the white uh, printout of that sheet that I gave you with you as you do your homework and such um, so that you don't have to worry about trying to memorize. Okay, so we've got a couple different identities here. First one is cosine of 2a, and there's actually three different versions of this double angle identity. Um, it could be cosine squared a minus sine squared a. It could be 2 cosine squared a minus 1 or 1 minus 2 sine squared a. Um, we can actually see how this and these two are related. If you think about the Pythagorean identity, sine squared, I'll use x here, plus cosine squared x equals 1. Um, well, if I'm doing sine squared or cosine squared minus sine squared, okay, that would be to get cosine squared minus sine squared, I would have to subtract 2 sine squared x from both sides minus 2 sine squared x. So then this would cancel, then I'd have a negative one of these. So I'd have cosine squared minus sine squared, um, which is the same thing as 1 minus 2 sine squared, which is this one right here, okay? Or I could, um, I could replace the, um, the sine squared right here, so that that's the 1 minus 2 sine squared version. I could also take this sine squared and replace it with 1 minus cosine squared, and then distribute the negative 2, add the 1, and I would end up with this one. Okay, so if you did not follow that, no big deal. You do not need to be able to obtain um, the different forms of this, but I just want to point out that we could if we needed to because they come from sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1 and different rearrangements of those. Okay, so again, so cosine of 2a is either equal to cosine squared of a minus sine squared of a or 2 cosine squared a minus 1 or 1 minus 2 sine squared a. If you are given this and you are writing one of these three, it really does not matter which one you choose. Um, if you're going the other direction, then just make sure you recognize them so that we can um, figure out what A is and double it to plug an angle in there. Okay, and then for sine of 2A, that's equal to 2 times sine A times cosine A. And then tangent of 2A is 2 tangent A over 1 minus tangent A uh, times another tangent A. Okay, I don't know why it's written like that. That is 1 minus tangent squared A. Okay. Um, not sure who wrote it like that, but I didn't catch it. Okay. Yeah. That's just one minus tangent squared. All right. So using these identi identities, let's simplify some expressions. Um, for each one of these, I would recommend identifying what a is or what two a is depending which way you're going. So when I see two cosine squared of an angle minus one, I'm looking at, let me switch colors here. I'm looking at this one right here. Okay, so that's 2 times cosine squared of an angle minus 1. So that means A is 22.5 degrees. Well, this is equal to cosine of 2A. So this is equal to cosine of 2 times 22.5, which is 45 degrees. Okay, um, and then that one we can actually go ahead and evaluate. Cosine of 45 degrees is 1 over root 2 or root 2 over 2. Either form is fine. Okay, and then we have 2 times sine of an angle times cosine of an angle, okay? So 2 times of the product of sine and cosine, I'm looking at this identity right here. Um, and so that means my A is pi over 12. And then according to this identity, this is equal to sine of 2 times pi over 12. 2 times pi over 12 is pi over 6. And we can evaluate sine of pi over 6 radians is 1 half. Okay, uh, last one of these, we've got cosine squared of the quantity 8x minus sine squared of the quantity 8x. Now, this has a variable x in it. That means our expression is going to be in terms of x still, and that's fine. We're not solving here. We're just simplifying what we can. Cosine squared minus sine squared, that's this first cosine of 2a identity. So here, a is equal to 8x. So this is equal to cosine oops, cosine of 2 times 8x, which is 
16x. And again, we just leave it like that. We're not solving for x. We can't make up a number for x. We just leave it in terms of x. Okay. For the next three here, um, so we've got sine 15 times cosine of 15. Well, that's similar to this sine of, or 2 times sine of a times cosine of a. But if I only have the sine times the cosine, then essentially what I'm doing with this is I'm dividing both sides by 2. Okay. Now, this 2 and this 2 do not cancel out. All right. If you're unsure of why, let's think about an example here. Um, if uh, let's let's just use let's say sine of um, let's say sine of 90. Let's see if one half of sine of 90 is the same as sine of 45. Okay, that's what we're wondering here. Well, sine of 90 is equal to one. One half of 90 is I'm sorry. One half of one is one half, and sine of 45 is one over root two. Are those the same? No, they are not. Okay, so we cannot factor a two or any other coefficient out of the angle, meaning if we divide both sides of the equation by two, we just need to put a one half in front. Okay, so be careful with the algebra there. Um, as far as order of operations goes, think of it this way. There is uh, an invisible pair of parentheses around there. So when we divide by two, we can't touch what's inside the parentheses because the sign is attached to it. All right, um, so with this one right here, this is going to be equal to one half of sine of 2a, a is equal to 15 here, so that 2a is going to be, so sine of 30, okay, and then sine of 30 degrees we know to be 1 half, so we have 1 half times 1 half, which is 1 fourth. For this next one, I'm looking at, I've got these fractions over 7, um, but I also, I just looking at my numerators, I have 1 minus 2 times something, um, so I could write this as 1 7th times 1 minus 2 sine squared of 35.6 degrees, not 3.5. Okay, um, so let's go back to our identities. We're looking for 1 minus 2 times sine squared. One, okay, so that looks like this third form. Get rid of some of this other scribbling here. It looks like this third one. Um, and we just happen to have a 1 7th in front of that whole thing. Well, if I have a 1 7th in front of this side, then I'm going to need to have a 1 7th in front of the other side as well. Or another way to think about this is we can replace this with our identity and just leave the 1 7th as a coefficient in front of that. So this becomes 1 7th times, okay, so here my A value is 35.6, and so this is equal to cosine of 2a, the 1 minus 2 sine squared a is equal to cosine of 2a. So this is cosine of 2 times 35.6. 2 times 35 is 70.6 times 2 is uh, 1.2, so 71.2 degrees. Um, I don't know what cosine of 71.2 degrees is. That is not an angle that we uh, should know, so just leave it like that. Okay, and then this last one, sine squared of 15 minus cosine squared of 15. Okay, really close to this, but it has a sine squared first. If we pull a negative one out of this, so this is negative one times, well, then it would be negative sine squared plus cosine squared, which is the same thing as cosine squared 15 minus sine squared 15. Okay, so we've switched the order there. Um, so that's going to be negative, and then so cosine squared minus sine squared is equal to cosine of 2 times a. And here our a is 15 degrees, so negative cosine of 2a would be negative cosine 30. So that's negative root 3 over 2. Oops. Move my window. Okay. Um, for these, for this, the next two problems, it says find the values of the sine and cosine functions for each angle measure. So uh, when it says for each angle measure, it means of this. So we are looking for sine of 2 theta and cosine of 2 theta given that sine of theta is negative 8 over 17 and that cosine of theta is negative. Okay, so we are going to have to draw a triangle here. 
Um, if sine of theta is negative, that means that we are either in quadrants three or four. Cute quadrant three or four. And if cosine is negative, then we are either in quadrants two or oops, that's a two uh, quadrants two or three. So to make both of these things true, that means um, our theta needs to be in quadrant three. Okay, so I'm going to sketch a triangle in quadrant three. So there's a theta. Uh, so sine of the angle is negative eight over seventeen. That's going to allow me to label two sides of my triangle. So negative eight over seventeen. Um, by the Pythagorean theorem, or this is a Pythagorean triple, so if you recognize it, great. If not, work it out. Um, the adjacent leg is 15, and that is also going to be negative because a point in quadrant 3 has both a negative x and y coordinate. Okay, um, so now we are looking for sine of 2 theta and cosine of 2 theta. Okay, well, we're going to need to use one of our identities. I'm going to use sine of... 2a equals 2 sine a cosine a, okay, where a is theta here. So sine of 2 theta is equal to 2 times sine of theta. Okay, what is sine of theta? Sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, so negative 8 over 17, times cosine of theta, which is adjacent over hypotenuse, negative 15 over 17. Notice that I did not write sine of negative 8 over 17 and cosine of negative 15 over 17. Negative 8 over 17, when, we, when you write a ratio of the side lengths, that is your trig function's value. That's not the angle that goes in, that's the ratio that comes out of a trig function, okay? Some of you are still writing like sine of, and then you're putting the ratio, and then you don't know how to evaluate it. Okay, um, so then we end up, let's multiply this together. 2 times, oh, this is going to be plus a positive, 2 times 30, or sorry, 2, two times 15 is 30, times negative, or positive 8 is 240 over 17 times 17 is 289. Okay, so sine of 2 theta equals 240 over 289. Okay. Um, for cosine of... 2 theta, I have choices with which of the ratios I want to use. Um, I could use, actually, I could use any of these three. Oops, why is it doing that? Okay, weird. Um, let's use the 1 minus sin, uh, 2 sine squared. So we're going to do 1 minus 2 sine squared of theta. Okay, so that's going to be equal to 1 minus 2 times sine of theta was equal to negative 8 over 17. So it's going to be negative 8 over 17 squared. So that's 1 minus positive 64 over 289, but then times 2. So 128 over 289. So that's going to be, let's see, common denominator would be 289 over 289. 289 minus 128 is equal to 161. That's all over 289. Okay, and as I'm finishing that, I realized that I did not finish this last one. I just stopped um, on the notes that are posted in Schoology, so hopefully you are watching the video. All right, we are looking again for sine and cosine of 2 theta. Here we are given that tangent of theta is equal to 3 and sine is positive. So tangent is positive, that means we're in quadrant one or quadrant three. Oops. And stop doing that. Yeah, okay. Uh, and sine positive means that we are in quadrant one or quadrant two. So we are in quadrant one. Okay, so let's draw our triangle. In quadrant one. Okay, tangent is 3 or, in other words, 3 over 1, so opposite over adjacent. And then this is going to be the square root of 1 squared plus 3 squared, so 1 plus 9, so root 10. Okay, so we are looking for sine of 2 theta, which, and um, we're using the same identity as we did above, which is equal to 2 times sine of theta, which is 
3 over root 10 times cosine of theta, which is equal to 1 over root 10. So we end up with 6 over root 10 times root 10 is 10, which is 3 fifths. Okay, and then for cosine of 2 theta, um, let's use a different identity this time. Let's use um, cosine squared minus 1. That's an identity, right? Yep, no, 2 cosine squared. That's what I meant. 2 cosine squared of theta minus 1, which is equal to 2 times, and cosine was 1 over root 10, so we have 1 over root 10 squared, and then minus 1, which is uh, 1 over root 10 squared is 1 tenth, 2 over 10 reduces to 1 fifth, minus 1 is negative 4 fifths. Okay, quick question. Does it make sense that I have a negative number here if my triangle is in quadrant 1? Well, remember that this ratio is not the cosine of this angle. It's the cosine of 2 theta. If theta is between 0 and 90 degrees here, then when we double it, we're going to be somewhere between 90 and 180 degrees. So that means 2 theta has to be somewhere over here. 2 theta would be like this angle right here and would be in quadrant 2. In quadrant 2, cosine is negative and sine is positive. So yes, those signs, S-I-G-N, do make sense. Okay, um, That's a good thing to pay attention to because we're going to be using that, especially in the next section where we have a plus or minus involved and we have to pick the appropriate sign. We need to pay attention to which sign is the ratio that we want in um, which S-I-G-N is the ratio that we want going to be um, not the angle we're given. Okay, so here we are looking for same instructions. So the sine and cosine of theta, given that 2 theta is equal to 4 fifths, and it says theta terminates in quadrant 4. So um, down here. Okay, um, so let's see. Cosine of 2 theta is equal to 4 fifths. We are looking for sine of theta and cosine of theta. Um, from our, let's see, let's use this, let's use this identity first to find sine. So 1 minus 2 sine squared of A, or uh, let me write over here. So cosine of 2, I'll write it in terms of A, 2A equals 1 minus 2 sine squared of A. Okay, so we're given the cosine of 2A part is 4 fifths. So 4 fifths is equal to 1 minus 2 times sine squared of A, which is theta, and that's what we're trying to solve for, okay? Um, to solve for sine of theta, let's subtract 1 first. So 4 fifths minus 1 is 4 fifths minus 5 fifths. So negative 1 fifth is equal to negative 2 sine squared of theta, then I'm dividing both sides by negative 2. So that becomes positive 1 tenth equals sine squared theta. And then I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Okay, this is where the, the triangle matters. So what I get, let's come over here, what I get is that sine of theta is equal to plus or minus root 1 tenth. Okay, because Theta is in quadrant or terminates in quadrant four, so really theta is this, but we're we're looking at at uh, the, an angle down here. Um, uh, sine of theta is going to be negative because sine is negative in quadrant four, so that's how we know which of these we pick. It's not both of them; we need to pick the negative. So sine of theta is equal to negative, and then root one is one over root ten, which you can write as uh, negative root ten over ten if you'd like. Okay. And then for cosine theta, for cosine of theta, let's use the 2 cosine squared of theta. Oh, sorry. Cosine of 2 theta. 
there we go. Cosine of 2 theta is equal to 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. And cosine of 2 theta we were given is equal to 4 fifths. Okay, so I'm going to add 1. So I get 9 fifths is uh, equal to 2 cosine squared theta divided by 2. That becomes 9 tenths. We're running out of room, so we're come this way. So I get 9 over 10 equals cosine squared theta. Take the square root. All right, we've got a plus or minus over here. Because we're in quadrant 4, cosine needs to be positive. So I am going to just take the positive and why are you doing that? And the square root of, uh, sorry, square root of 9 tenths is 3 over root 10. And that's equal to cosine theta. And again, we want the positive. Okay, how many more do we have here? Oh, one more. All right. Um, We're looking for sine and cosine of theta, given that cosine of 2 theta equals negative 12 thirteenths. Okay, so this right here tells me that theta is in quadrant 2, and cosine 2 theta equals negative 12 thirteenths. Um, I'm going to use, so let's see, negative 12 thirteenths, which is cosine of 2 theta. I'm going to use... Um, that that's equal to 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. Okay, so we can solve for cosine from here. Um, add 1 to both sides. We get 1 thirteenth equals 2 cosine squared theta divided by 2. We get 1 over 26 equals cosine squared theta. Take the square root. And again, we would have a plus or minus on here, uh, but we need to check if theta is in quadrant 2. I'm going to use a triangle anyway here, so let's go ahead and sketch it. If theta is over here in quadrant 2, then um, our cosine is going to be negative. So cosine of theta is equal to negative 1 over root 26, which is negative root 26 over 26 if you would like to do that. Okay, um, to find sine, we can use one of the other identities, or let's use the triangle this time. So let's, um, let's label the triangle based on what we just found. So our cosine is negative 1 over root 26, okay? And then by the Pythagorean theorem, root 26 squared is 25, or sorry, 26, minus negative one squared is one, square root of 25 is, so this side is five. So sine of theta is positive five over root 26, okay? So we could have used one of the other uh, double angle identities, or we could just use the triangle in this case.